This is a special report from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Adam Montgomery, the man accused of murdering his daughter, Harmony Montgomery, in court today for sentencing on other charges, weapons-related charges from a completely different offense. We're going to take you to the courtroom right now to hear the entirety of that sentencing, including Adam's comments about not murdering his daughter. Let's go there right now. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Benjamin Agati for the state. All right, just to make sure I have what's been submitted, I have sentencing memoranda and from a a sentencing memorandum from the state, as well as the state's sentencing, proposed sentencing sheets. I have proposed sentencing sheets from the defense, but no memorandum, correct? Correct, and I'm afraid I have the statement of no change to financial status. It didn't get filed, but I will have it filed. That's fine. All right. Uh, Mr. Montgomery, you're here for sentencing today. I'm going to hear from the state first, and then I'll hear from you and your counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, the state does not intend to be very long with its statements. Obviously, the sentencing memorandum, we think, fairly surmises the reasons for the state's recommendation. Um, As you've seen, the state is recommending essentially 15 to 30 years staying committed on both of the armed career criminal charges. Uh, That's charge numbers 2008, 742, and 743. And separate from that, concurrent with one another, but of course consecutive to the armed career criminal charges, we're seeking seven and a half to 15 years stand committed for the theft by unauthorized takings. uh, Charges there as well, those docket numbers for the record uh, being uh, 1964098C and 99C. Um, given the fact that the receiving stolen properties and the theft by unauthorized takings in this operate almost as alternative charges, we have already spoken with defense counsel and we are in agreement that the receiving stolen properties uh, should be essentially a guilty finding and held in advance. Uh, so no separate sentencing forms have been done by either party because of that. The sentence should be on the theft by unauthorized takings. Uh, on that, is it your position that those get vacated after the conclusion of the appeal period? Um, I believe, Your Honor, that we would say that they should be held as guilty findings, but I would not agree that they are uh, vacated after the appeal period because um, in the very unlikely event that there may be a habeas matter down the road, you would have two convictions that could never be brought back, which would basically be undoing the argument of the habeas corpus. So we would have them be held as guilty findings, again, with sentence just simply held in abatement. They basically exist, but with no separate sentence for the defendant. Do you agree with that? Yes, I believe lesser included. So that would be the appropriate procedure, but these are alternatives. So, so you you do agree? I do agree. Okay. With the state. All right. Thank you. Um, one other question about your proposed sentence. Uh, your memorandum indicates that you are seeking a restitution hearing at some point, but I didn't see anything about that on the proposed sentencing sheets. Yes, Your Honor, and I apologize. That is a, a box that we should have essentially checked off on, on both of the theft by unauthorized taking charges. Um, it was our understanding that we thought that we had a statement from the insurance company that paid Christopher Frain uh, in his insurance payment for the two guns that had been stolen from him. He has been made whole by the insurance company. We do not have that statement from the company yet, so I don't have the f- total figure of how much money was paid out. That would be the only restitution cost in this particular case. Do you have any maximum amounts? Do you have any? I, I don't have no, no I don't have one that I can say with confidence, Your Honor, here today. Okay, so you're just seeking a hearing on that within 90 days? Yes, Your Honor, and ideally, if uh, we can come to an agreement on that, once that paperwork is received from from the insurance company to us, we may be able to have an agreement on that. Um, if not, and the state would agree that if we do not have that within 90 days, then the company has forfeited its right to be able to seek restitution, and we would not uh, we would ask that the sentence be completed at that point. All right, and defense has no objection to that. I think the matter of restitution should have been presented today if there is an issue or an advance of today so that we could have resolved it. So to that extent, I object to an extension. But no legal basis for an objection. Correct. All right, go ahead. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
With that being said, I'm not going again, Your Honor. I'm not going to go through every single thing that's written down there. I think you can see that the state looked at it from a different perspective, not a different perspective, but the same perspective the court uses on every case, the proper balance of punishment, deterrence, rehabilitation, and restitution that's needed for this defendant for the offenses that have gone forward. Um, the defendant has chosen not to submit a sentence memorandum, which is perfectly his right, but from the sentencing sheets we can see that he is asking for a minimum sentence, the minimum that's allowed under the law on the two armed career criminal charges, and for no additional sentence to be done with theft by unauthorized taking. And that is where we disagree. This, the, for a person that has the minimum qualifying offenses and is then convicted of armed career criminal, may, that 10 to 20 would be the appropriate number. But that's not this defendant. And for the person who has maybe not had deterrence or rehabilitation or probation or parole as part of their previous sentences, so they never had that opportunity to truly seek some sort of rehabilitation, then maybe the 10 to 20 year sentence would be appropriate. But again, that's not this defendant. After trial, the defendant was found guilty of the armed career criminal on two guns and on the theft by unauthorized taking the receiving stolen property within this window of seven days or so, several days, excuse me, in 2019. What are the two guns? They're the assault rifle and the shotgun. As he termed, and as we heard from the witness stand here, the big boys, that he referred to them knowing that he could turn around and sell them to other convicted felons for money or for drugs, which he did. And having that rifle then show up in the hands of what we know now is a federally convicted drug trafficker. That's why part of the reason why armed career criminal, the minimum sentence of 10 to 20, the minimum sentence should not apply for this defendant. That behavior alone should not result in that, especially with the defendant here, who, as you've seen, has been convicted 16 years ago of pointing a knife at a 15-year-old girl of 15 years ago during an armed home invasion, holding the neck to a victim, demanding money, and then pointing that gun at the chest of a police officer who responded, who was able to knock the gun out of his hand and wrestle him to the ground. And as you saw on that, those two matters, Your Honor, the one from 2000, excuse me, one from 2008 involving the 15-year-old girl, he then, what had he had? What did he have? A violation of probation. And for after this armed career criminal, where he held the gun to a woman's neck inside her home in front of her child and then pointed the gun at the officer, what happened afterwards? Two separate violations of parole and probation and three defaults for failing to show up to court. The minimum sentence is not appropriate when you have the defendant who then after this stabs another man with a knife 15 years ago. And then eight years ago does another armed robbery with, with a conviction of armed assault to murder for shooting a man in the face that's just five years before the activity that's in front of you here today. Can I ask you about that, Attorney Agati? Yes. Uh, and maybe I missed it. I did not see what his sentence was in that case. From the reading of the sentence, Your Honor, and that I believe is all contained within Exhibit 3, for that particular sentence, I believe on each of the charges that went forward, the armed robbery charge, the assault to armed and assault to murder charge, the firearm carry without a license charge, and the discharging of firearm within 500 feet of a building that, uh, I apologize, the last one, the discharging is just a guilty file. On the other three, he received 18 months stand committed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. If the defendant were here and we were in a federal setting, then he would be eligible potentially for a third strike and be looking at life without parole, uh, or life with or without parole. And the state is not seeking that here. It's not saying that he should be getting the maximum sentence on the armed career criminals, but certainly is saying that he should not get the minimum sentence. Um, with regards to uh, one other aspect of that, Your Honor, on the thefts, the defendant's proposal that the thefts should just be guilty findings. We don't feel that that's appropriate given that you have two guns here. It, it, this is not a situation where you have a stolen wallet and the defendant's walking down the street and when he's arrested for having stolen a wallet, he happens to be having a gun on him. Maybe in that situation, the state could agree, depending on history and depending on behavior, that a minimum sentence was appropriate and that you could easily see that the wallet charge might be just a guilty finding because there's this armed career criminal charge. The defendant's not walking down the street here with a stolen weapon from somewhere else and having stolen a wallet. It's stealing two guns from inside 
a dwelling place, inside a home where a woman and her child were sleeping. And then what did he do with the guns afterwards? We heard he advertised, he marketed, he negotiated, he bartered, he displayed, he test fired, he sold these two guns. And as we heard from one witness, actually bought the gun back later on and sold it anew. Both of those guns now going out into the community. It's not just a simple possession. It's not just a simple theft that's there. It's a theft, and in that theft, it's a theft of two more firearms. That which he knows he cannot take, that which he turns around in such short time markets to sell to other convicted felons. It's not the right defendant to be doing a guilty finding on that, not with his pattern of history, not with the offenses that are here. With regards to, I guess, two other aspects that I want to just briefly address for you. Um, with regards to victim impact, we have reached out to Christopher Frayne and asked whether he wanted to have any impact uh, and provide his statements to the court. He asserted to us that he did not want to have anything to do with any matter moving forward. He did not want to provide a statement to the court. I don't know what his motivation was, what his concerns or worries are, but he made that very clear to the state that he did not wish to present anything to you. With regards to the standpoint of the Manchester Police Department, um, who as you can see, several members happen to be here today. Um, obviously, there are other investigations that are going on. We feel and they feel that this sentence is appropriate for the charges that are before you today not for the other two guns that we will have hearings on later on, not for Harmony, who's missing, who we will have a trial later on this year, the appropriate sentence for today. Guns in the community has been a problem. It always has been uh, throughout history. Guns in the community has been a problem. And here, the defendant, after all of his convictions, has knowingly continued to be a part of that dealing of firearms in the community. And so again, another reason why the Manchester Police Department does not feel that the minimum sentence is the appropriate sentence here, and they would agree with the position of that what the state has proposed to you. Something else has to be done. For a different defendant, for different offenses, we can understand why a minimum sentence might be right. Don't believe that's what the legislature intended. For other people, like the wallet scenario I gave you a moment ago, then certainly might fit what the legislature was looking at to say that we have to have this minimum time period with no suspension, no deferrals, has to be served. This defendant is not the minimum defendant. Those are basically the reasons for the state's proposal. Happy to answer any questions you may have. I don't have any at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Obviously, we disagree with the state, and one of the biggest disagreements is that uh, because of his background, he's not appropriate for the minimum sentence here. Quite frankly, I think armed career criminal and the sentence is a factor that the person who is involved, who is being sentenced, has priors, has priors of violence has been incarcerated before, has had opportunities before, and they have been arrested, tried, and convicted for, again, having a gun, and often that goes hand in hand with a new charge, as it did here. So, the minimum mandatory of 10 to 15, uh, 10 to 20, I'm sorry, is not for people who haven't done very much. It's not for people that don't have a history. It is for people that are charged with armed career criminal because they have prior crimes of violence in their past, because they have been given opportunities, because this is a repeat offense. So that is the starting point for someone like Adam Montgomery in a vacuum and I'll address the vacuum later. But the starting point where Mr. Montgomery should be thought about in sentencing is two decades of his life because also with regard to theft and armed career criminal, generally in a theft, if somebody goes into a home and takes a bunch of things, it's one charge of theft. But guns are different. So that if somebody goes into a home and takes more than one gun, they can be charged for each gun and sentenced for each gun. Similarly with our career criminal. 
the act is the exact same. But because there's more than one, one gun here, the charge is, the minimum sentence is increased by the same mandatory minimum consecutive. That is where Mr. Montgomery should be. And I would suggest that the aggravating factors in any armed career criminal, because we presuppose that this is the person that should be held accountable for this very much higher uh, charge with a higher mandatory minimum than an A felony would normally get. The difference would be the charge or the crime that occurred that gave rise to the armed career criminal. And that, if that was uh, aggravating factors such as shooting the gun, using the gun, causing harm to pe physical harm to people with the gun, or any other factor. Uh, it is the crime that gave rise to the armed career criminal that should give rise to aggravating factors to increase from the minimum. And here, the crime as presented by the state was a crime of opportunity. Um, it did not involve violence, although anyone would say any kind of theft is a level of violence, but we don't have physical harm to anybody. We don't have an assault of somebody. It was a crime of opportunity. Also, the evidence is that Mr. Montgomery was an addict. He was a drug addict. And that the purpose surrounding this crime, uh, the evidence is that it was either for drugs or money to get drugs that this was a crime of opportunity based on an addiction and to fuel that addiction. This was not a crime of uh, violence or assault where the purpose of the gun is to cause physical harm to someone else. That the consequences are that the guns fall into somebody else's hands. Um, certainly that occurred here and that person can cause violence, but when we are talking about addiction and what's in the mind, of the person involved, it was either for money for drugs or for drugs themselves. And that was the purpose behind all that. That is not the type of aggravating factor that should it take a sentence of two decades. Two decades he will be isolated, two decades he will be incarcerated, two decades he will not be entitled to 651.20 or suspension of any type of that sentence he is exactly what the state said should be isolated from the community. Um, the state brought up some interesting factors and I believe with regard to Mr. Sargent, um, who was federally charged, I believe the state at trial <coughs> mentioned that he got about a 12 year sentence and you heard at trial that his household was filled with guns and other weapons. Big guns, long guns, pistols, short guns, sawed off guns, um, crossbows, knives, and a ton of ammunition. This person was dealing in weaponry. Um, he was also dealing in drugs. There was a boatload of drugs that were also found during the search of his home. That is of a different caliber than a crime of opportunity and then selling what is stolen for drugs or money for drugs. That person is the person that is on the aggravating scale. Mr. Montgomery is not. He is on the scale of, we assume a bad past, we assume priors, we assume incarceration. This is why we have a mandatory minimum and because there are two guns involved, it's two decades, not one. And I don't think any other sentence comes close to this sort of declaration that it, your past is why you are facing this right now. As far as um, the, the impact on the community, and as the state put in their um, memorandum collateral issues, uh, this theft of guns occurred in October of 2019. 
and the investigation ended in December of 2019, essentially, except for I think there was something in January with Michael Sullivan. Um, this investigation came back because of the mention of Adam Montgomery early on and then the investigation into Adam Montgomery for other things. The state can do it. It absolutely can do it. But to uh, talk about the effect of the community, I have to remind the court about Ishmael Garcia, the one that is not charged with taking the third gun where the evidence was equally, if not more, um, persuasive, right down to that the person that bought the gun from Ishmael said that he bought the gun from Ishmael. No steps were taken. No punishment was considered for getting that person off the street. This investigation was motivated by collateral reasons. I am not saying that the state cannot do that or that there is a problem with the conviction because of that. But that was the motivation for this. And then the state says it should play little role, but it does play a role, these other charges. I'm afraid that it plays a significant role and that it should not. It plays a significant role to why the state has asked for a high sentence. It played a significant role that this investigation and so much of what happened in this case was related to the investigation of Harmony, whether it was leverage on Kayla, leverage on Adam, it plays a major role and it should not. And if we step back from the other investigations, which we should, they should not be considered here at all, but I believe that they generally are. And I ask that the court step back and look at the purpose of a minimum mandatory and an armed career criminal. It's not a starting point. It is, this is what you get, and under certain circumstances, you'll get more, which I would suggest the certain circumstances would be the crime at issue, the circumstances of the crime for which he is being um, sentence. In this case, um, the state talks about rehabilitation and the lack of rehabilitation. And I could talk about the circumstances of upbringing. I could talk about circumstances of opportunities missed through no fault of his own. And I could talk about efforts at rehabilitation. But again, that doesn't matter. It is a minimum mandatory. We can expect all of that in your life, and you will get 10 years. And if you take more than one gun, you will get 20 years. Not that 20 years is one gun is much different from two, but that's what the legislature said, 20 years minimum mandatory. And then, as the state says, um, no sentence for the theft charges because I have asked for a suspended sentence. And what I have done is uh, fashion the two suspended sentences so that one would be brought forward during the course of Mr. Montgomery's incarceration to give him the extra incentive because things happen in prison that people forget the ultimate goal sometimes in the circumstances that they're living in by a suspended sentence that comes forward or, or the time period ends during the period of incarceration, it is that reminder. You have goals to reach. Continue towards your goals. Don't give up. The second one is suspended for a period after uh, release date on the 20 years to 10 year consecutive sentences. Again, once you get out, remember, it is still here, not simply parole, but also as an additional level of incarceration for this crime. So it's not nothing. But given those minimum mandatories of 10 plus 10, I think it is appropriate here. Um, and again, taking the one extra gun didn't double the harm didn't double anything except that that's the way the legislature put it because we are not having discretion 10 years 
we're not looking at anything else but you have taken guns, you are in possession of guns when you have a prior history of violence. <coughs> And on those other charges that the state felt compelled to mention again, the presumption of innocence applies and they should not be considered, but that is without a doubt of great concern here. Um, I believe Adam would like to address you. So um, I understand that I was found guilty by a jury and I'm not here to dispute that at all. The only consideration that I ask of you this morning is for you not to consider anything as it relates to the case regarding my daughter Harmony. I did not kill my daughter Harmony, and I look forward to my upcoming trial to refute those offensive claims. Uh, probably won't believe you when I tell you that I, I didn't wake up one morning and choose to become an addict. I don't want to be an addict, and I will spend my time in prison utilizing it to the best of my ability to change things about myself. I could have had a meaningful life and I blew that opportunity through drugs, but I loved my daughter unconditionally and I did not kill her. So please don't consider anything that relates to those charges. Only consider the facts to this case. Thank you. Anything further? Just very briefly, Your Honor, the state is also looking forward to that trial coming up this fall, and we agree that you should be doing the sentence based upon the ones that are in front of you. We also could talk about 16 years of violations of parole and probation, so the idea of a suspended sentence here for the theft by an authorized taking has absolutely no power whatsoever because it's just been shown, again, through 16 years without any meaningful break in his activity that the defendant doesn't follow parole, doesn't follow probation. And while he has something to look forward to, he violates it time and time again. My only other comment, Your Honor, is the concept that, that the defendants, the difference, uh, as Attorney Smith just stated, that the difference in the crimes that led to the armed career criminal shouldn't matter, but they, I'm sorry, but they do matter. Um, the same thing that could be done for an individual that violates a controlled drug law three times, let's say three possessions of, of a gram of fentanyl, that that person is also facing a possible armed career criminal if they're found with a gun. That individual, for the right balance of punishment, deterrence, rehabilitation, is not the same as for this individual and the reasons why he qualifies for armed career criminal. That should be taken into account. All right, thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to take a short recess, maybe 15 minutes. I want to consider the information I've been provided, and then I'll come out and uh, announce my sentence. Thank you. So, Mr. Montgomery, uh, the state is not requesting uh, that the court consider uh, your other pending charges here. Um, and I understand from your counsel uh, the concern uh, that any sentence imposed today uh, would be taking that into consideration. And I want to tell you, um, that the court is not. Uh, you will have your trial on that. You're being sentenced today on these armed career criminal and theft charges that you've been already been found guilty of. But the court notes uh, that there are a significant number of aggravating factors here, uh, making the minimum mandatory sentences that you're requesting inappropriate. Um, First and perhaps foremost, each of the prior felony offenses outlined by the state in their sentencing memorandum uh, involved significantly violent behavior uh, and violent conduct that involved weapons. Uh, your prior conduct over the 15 years may be some of the most violent and egregious that I have seen. Uh, it involves uh, a knife to the throat of a 15-year-old a gun pointed at a woman uh, with a child in the home during a home invasion, a gun pointed at a police officer, and an armed robbery where the victim was shot in the face. You yourself were shot during uh, that incident. Not all predicate offenses for armed robberies are this, uh, excuse me, for armed career criminal cases are the same. Um, and these predicate offenses are particularly egregious. This case itself, the stolen firearms in this case, also had significant aggravating factors. 
Uh, these guns were stolen. There was a child in the house. The guns were maintained while you yourself had children in the home. They were There was trading, selling, buying back of guns. The guns were sold to and bought back from a convicted sex offender. And ultimately, one of the guns was discovered in the hands uh, of an individual who is uh, apparently trafficking in both guns and drugs. The brazen nature of your conduct, the bragging. I mean, I, I listened to these witnesses. Uh, you bragged about the guns. You talked about them being hidden, hidden in the walls of your home. Uh, you talked about concerns about being discovered by the ATF. I mean, this is not uh, a felony where there were three predicate offenses involving Controlled Drug Act. Um, you know, the gun violence has taken a toll on our community, particularly on the young people here. Um, and the trafficking of guns in the community, um, the violence that we see as a result of those guns being in the wrong hands uh, cannot be minimized. Um, and for these reasons, uh, as I said, I don't believe that the minimum mandatory sentences are appropriate here. Therefore, the court is going to sentence you to the fifth, uh, to 15 to 30 years on each of the armed career criminal charges consecutive to each other. On the uh, theft ca cases, what I'm going to do on those is you'll get a seven and a half to 15 year stand committed sentence. Five years of each of those sentences will be suspended, conditioned on your good behavior and compliance with the terms and conditions of the sentencing order. And I will tell you that I am doing that because given your history, I want something, something to incentivize you to be of good conduct while you are at the prison. And if you are not of good conduct or you commit other crimes while you are incarcerated, the state can move to impose that suspended portion of your sentences. So each of the theft, on each of the theft charges, they'll be concurrent with each other, but they will be consecutive to the armed career criminal charges. Uh, we will have uh, a restitution hearing. I'll allow the state uh, 90 days to file a pleading with regard to restitution. If no pleading is filed, no restitution will be ordered. So uh, I'm going to read you the sentences now. Please listen carefully. On charge ID 2008743C, you are sentenced to the New Hampshire State Prison for not more than 30 years nor less than 15 years. There is added to the minimum sentence a disciplinary period equal to 150 days for each year of your minimum sentence to be prorated for any part of the year. This sentence is to be served as follows, stand committed, commencing today. The court recommends the Department of Corrections that you be screened and or assessed for drug and alcohol treatment needs. Uh, the state will be granted 90 days to submit uh, a pleading re regarding uh, their request for restitution. Uh, if they do so, a restitution hearing uh, will be scheduled upon a further filing or objection by your counsel. Additionally, you're to meaningfully participate in and complete any counseling, treatment, or educational programs as directed by the correctional authority or probation parole. You were ordered to have no contact with uh, Christopher or Kimberly Frayne. That no contact is either directly or indirectly, including but not limited to contact in person by mail, phone, email, text message, social networking sites, or through third persons. No contact at all, Mr. Montgomery. Um, that would be cause to impose uh, the suspended portion of your sentence. Law enforcement may be direct, will be directed that they could destroy or return evidence to its rightful owner in the case. Uh, you are ordered to be of good behavior and comply with all the terms of your sentence. Uh, additionally, uh, on charge ID 2008742C, you are sentenced to New Hampshire State Prison for not more than 30 years nor 15 years. There is added to the minimum sentence a disciplinary period equal to 150 days for each year of your minimum sentence to be prorated for any part of the year. That sentence is to be served stand committed consecutive to charge ID 2008743C. The court recommends to the Department of Corrections that you be screened or assessed for drug and alcohol treatment needs. Uh, additionally, uh, you are required to meaningfully participate in and complete any counseling, treatment, or education programs as directed by the Correctional Authority or Probation Parole. You have the same no contact order uh, on this charge as well. Uh, law enforcement may destroy or return evidence to its rightful owner in this case, uh, and you are ordered to be of good behavior and comply with all the terms of the sentence. 
on charge ID 1964099C. You are sentenced to New Hampshire State Prison for not more than 15 years nor less than seven and a half years. You have the 150 day disciplinary period uh, to be prorated for any part of the year. Stand committed. Uh, Five years of the minimum and none of the maximum is suspended. The suspensions are conditioned upon your good behavior and compliance with all the terms and conditions of the sentencing order. The suspended sentence will begin today and end 15 years after your release uh, from this charge. Um, so this, this charge is consecutive to the armed career criminal charges, uh, but concurrent with the other theft charge. Uh, all of the other conditions that I reviewed with you earlier uh, with regard to the uh, destruction or return of evidence, the requirement of good behavior, and that you be screened for drug and alcohol treatment needs are also included on this sentence. On charge ID 1964098C, uh, you are sentenced to the identical sentence that I just reviewed with you, uh, which is, con and these two sentences are concurrent. It's the not more than 15 years nor less than seven and a half years at the New Hampshire State Prison with the 150 day disciplinary period and includes the five year that five years of the minimum sentence uh, and none of the maximum sentence are suspended. The suspensions are uh, conditioned on your good behavior and compliance with all the terms and conditions of the sentencing order. Uh, that suspended sentence will begin today and end from 15 years from your release on charge ID 1964098C. Uh, all of the other terms and conditions that I reviewed with you on the other theft charge are also imposed on this charge. Do you have any questions about that? All right. Um, yes. Um, I thought I heard it, but I'm not positive. Pre-trial credit on the first charge? Pre-trial confinement credit of 580 days uh, on the first charge. Uh, in light of uh, your current financial condition and that you have uh, a lengthy prison sentence that you'll be serving the court will find that you do not have an ability to pay your attorney's fees. You won't have counsel fees. In these. In this case, if you have prior counsel fees, uh, those still stand. Um, I'm going to ask you now to just be seated. I need to f find a clerk so that you can be read your rights to sentence review. Okay? Uh, please be seated. You, re you may remain seated. Um, Adam Montgomery, you are hereby notified you have the right to apply for review of the state prison sentence imposed on you today. The application may be filed within 30 days after the date of the sentence, but not thereafter except for good cause shown. If you file such an application, your sentence will be reviewed by a board of three members who will be either judicial referees and or superior court judges. Review of the sentence may result in a decrease or increase of the minimum or maximum term within the limits fixed by law, or there may be no change in the sentence. And a form for making application, if you wish to do so, is set forth on this form. The state also has the right to apply for sentence review and can pick up a blank form to do so if it chooses from the clerk's office. Um, this form is not filled out for Mr. Montgomery, so I'm not going to hand it to you. I'll give it to counsel. Um, in about 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. You're all set, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That's the latest in the sentencing of Adam Montgomery on the weapons charges. He'll be put away for, uh, it looks to be at least 35 years on those two charges. His trial uh, possibly happening later this year on the charges of murder of his daughter, Harmony Montgomery. We are going to continue to follow him and this case and seek justice for Harmony Montgomery right here. Stay close. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.